What's up guys? Today we're going to use uh, version 3 of Apollo Client. It hasn't been released yet because it's still in beta, but I've tried it out and it's actually great and we're using hooks and all this uh, neat stuff to fetch our data from our GraphQL endpoint. And the endpoint is going to be, of course, from a Star Wars API, so stay tuned! Okay, we're starting from scratch. In this one, we're going to use Create React App to bootstrap our application. But we can first take a look at the documentation on uh, the Apollo client. If you go to this page, apollographql.com slash docs slash react slash, this one says version 3.0 dash beta. But I think if you just go to this one first, yeah, we have the documentation. And the current version is uh, 2.6. That's the one that's released. And version 3 is still in beta, but you can change here easily to see the documentation for the beta. And it's actually not that complicated. You have to install, let's see here, I think we have to move forward a few steps here to get started. Yeah, we have to install Apollo-Client, uh, and that's everything we need actually. Except for one thing, I'm going to show you this in a minute. We have to install the GraphQL peer dependency ourselves. Okay, make sure that you're inside your favorite terminal. And we're going to use Create React App. So MPX, Create dash React dash App. And we're going to call it Apollo Test. Apollo dash Test. And press Enter. And this will start bootstrapping our app. And you guessed it, I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. It's a perfect opportunity for that when installing this stuff. Okay, that went well. So let's navigate inside our application folder, cd apollo-test. I often forget this one and I start installing dependencies without navigating inside a folder. So as you can see, we have some files here that create React app created for us, so that's great. And we have to install Apollo now, so npm i and we have an at apollo forward slash client. And as you can see here, it's really important that we also install the GraphQL dependency. It doesn't say this in uh, the documentation, but it won't work if we don't install it ourselves, because in the later versions of npm, we have to install our peer dependencies ourselves. We can skip those ones with TypeScript and uh, yeah, the ESLint. We don't need those ones now, so we just need a GraphQL, otherwise this won't work. So npm i GraphQL. Great, and that's all we need. So let's open up our code editor. To make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And as you can see, we have our files here. It's the usual files that Create React App bootstrapped for us. So we can remove some stuff here. We can remove uh, setup test, service worker, logo, index.css, the app.test.js, and the app.css. We don't need those ones. So we just have the app and the index left, so we have to remove some stuff inside here also. Remove the service worker. And the index.css import will be good to go in the index file. And in the app file we can remove these imports here, the app.css and the logo. And for now we can just have our app here that says app. Do some auto formatting and save it. Also make sure that you save this index.js file and we can start it up to see that it works. npm start. Yeah, and it's working. We have the app showing up here, so that's great. Make it a little bit bigger. Whoops, that was the console. I should be inside this window. All right, back inside of the code, we're going to be in the index.js file. Uh, so down below here somewhere, we can import all the stuff that we need from Apollo client. So import curly braces. First, we need the Apollo client. 
Then we need a Polo provider. We need the HTTT, HTTP link. Make sure that you spell this correctly. It's a capital H and a capital L. Then we have the in-memory cache. All right. We're going to grab them from at Apollo forward slash client. So that's everything we need to import to get this up and running. The first thing we have to do with Apollo client is that we have to create the client itself. Below all the imports, we create a client. Const client equals, we create a new Apollo client. Parenthesis, curly braces. We give this one an object. And the object takes a few properties here. So we first have to set up the cache. I believe in the earlier versions when we use Apollo Boost, for example, we don't have to set a cache up for ourselves. I think it will do that automatically for you. But in this one, we have to set up the cache ourselves. But that's really easy actually because we import the in-memory cache here. So we can set it up with new in-memory cache and we just invoke that one. No, that's an object, so we should have a comma there. So this one will set everything up that has to do with a cache for us, and we don't have to think about that anymore. Then we have our link, and this is going to be the link to the endpoint, our GraphQL endpoint. So we create a new HTTP link. We invoke this and give it an object. It will take an URI, and this is going to be a string. And I can show you here, this is the Staros GraphQL API. Uh, it's free to use. It's graphql.graphcms.com slash forward slash simple forward slash v1 forward slash swappy. And this is great. If we look at the queries, for example, we can question for films, persons, planets, species, starships, vehicles. And this is great. It's a really fun API to use. And I'm going to show all, uh, I think I'm going to choose all vehicles in this one that we're going to use later. But as you can see, this one here is the actual endpoint that we use in our application. And I'm actually going to type it in for you so you can follow along. So inside here, we type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash API dot graph no it's not this one here i just want to try this out yeah let's type this in first dot com forward slash simple forward slash v1 forward slash swappy so this is the endpoint to the graphql server and i actually want to try this now i copy this one go to new tab and see what happens. Yeah, it changes the URL to this one here. Okay, that's fine. We're using this one here now, and this will work for us. We set up the cache, and we tell Apollo Client where our GraphQL endpoint is. Now we have to provide this one to our application, and as you can see here, we are rendering out the app in our DOM. That's the main component for our application. So we can wrap this with the Apollo provider that we imported up here. And this will make sure that the complete app will have access to this endpoint. So make sure that you place this uh, really high up in your application. You could also place it in the app, of course. Now I choose to place it in the index.js because that's the very highest uh, file I have in this application now. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think something like that. So up here, we have the Apollo provider. And we give it a client. We give it the client that we created here. Client equals client. Then we move our app inside of this one. Do some auto formatting. And it should look like this. So we're wrapping our application in the Apollo provider and the Apollo provider makes sure that we can use Apollo all over our application to fetch our data. So as you can see, it's just a few lines of code to get this up and running. We have hooked this up to this GraphQL endpoint 
and we can use it in our application. So this is it for index.js file. Make sure that you navigate inside of the app.js file. We're going to fetch some data now. And we can do that by first import some tools that we're going to use. We have something that's called use query. That's a hook that we use to fetch our data from the GraphQL endpoint. And we have something that's called GQL. And we grab those ones from, uh, yeah, Apollo client. At Apollo forward slash client. All right. The first thing we have to do now is to create our GraphQL query. And we do that and place it in a const. So const, we have capital letters, all starships. Yeah, not vehicles. I'm using starships here, right? So we're going to grab all the Star Wars starships. Then we invoke the DQL. It's hard for me to say. And we have backticks. And inside the backticks, we can write our query. This one will parse our GraphQL query and make sure that we can use this one with Apollo to fetch our data. Inside here, we have an object, and then we have all starships. And this is from the GraphQL endpoint, as I showed you here. We have these all starships here. We could, yeah. I can show you here, all starships. So this is a playground you can use here to check out the API and try it out. I run this query. And as you can see, we get all the starships here, the name and the ID. So that's the one I'm writing here. We're going to grab the ID and the name. So that's our very simple query. Then we have our app here. The first thing we have to do is to use the hook that's called use query. And we give that hook or query and it will fetch the data for us. So we have a const, then we just structure out the loading, the error, and the data equals, we call use query, and we give it to all starships. So this is all you need to do in Apollo client. We fetch the data here, and it will give us these properties back that we can use in our application. So first, we can say that if it is loading, we return a p tag that says loading. All right. So we know when it's loading, it's going to return this text for us. It could also be a loading indicator, a spinner, or something like that, of course. Then we can check if we have an error. Then we're going to return a text that says, yeah, maybe, whoops, something is wrong. And this is really great because it will handle all these states for us. So we just check if this is true and if this is true. If the loading is true, we know that we're loading and we're showing this loading text. If it's an error, we know that something went wrong. So we're going to show this error text instead. But if we're not loading and if we don't have an error, we can render out our application. And we do that in our return statement. So create parentheses here. We can actually remove this one. For this one, I create the React Fragment. Uh, yeah, we can make an H2 tag, maybe. And uh, it can say Star Wars Spaceships. We can make a nice little rocket there. Right. Yeah, it's complaining now. I should wrap the emojis in a span. Well, 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 I can do that also. Yeah, and now it's complaining even more. It should have a role of image also. Do some auto formatting and yeah. It wants an area label also. Well, I can do that also. Uh, spaceships. Okay. For this tutorial sake, we don't have to do this. But uh, as you can see here, it's great that it, is, it actually complains because it uh, wants you to build this 
application as good as you can and have accessible code and all this stuff. So this one is for accessibility. So it complains if you don't have that in mind when you write this code. So that's great. Okay, so that's our header. And below our header, we can map over our data. That's the data that we get here that's going to contain all the spaceships. So data, all starships. We map through them. We have a starship on each iteration and we have the ID. We create an error function and for this one, we can make an implicit return. Yeah, and we have a P tag. We set the key to be the ID. It's important to always have a key when you iterate over stuff that you're going to present in your DOM when you're using React. So we have the starship.name. So we get the data here. It's going to be an array with all the spaceships. We iterate through them here with a map and we show a P tag for each starship. So save this one and we can go back inside our application and reload it and nothing happens. Why is it so? NPM start. Strange. It should do that automatically because it will update every time you change something in your code. But as usual, when you show something, it will cause trouble. Hopefully you didn't have to restart your application. But as you can see here, if I reload this, it tells loading until it has fetched the data. And then we show the data here. And we have all the spaceships here. So that's very neat. And this is all there is to it, to fetch data from a GraphQL endpoint with Apollo Client 3.0. I love this way of fetching data and using this custom hook, and it gives you really clean code and easy to work with. So I hope you learned something here, and make sure to try it out. It's really, really neat. See you in the next video.